Hey everyone, welcome to our new campaign. We are going to be playing as the Wintertooth. And so in this campaign, I want to do a another blitz. Um, so I'm going to try to conquer the entire map as fast as I possibly can. Um, however, I'm not going to be taking advantage of of glitches. It's going to be just uh, the, the best gameplay I can do. Um, we'll be taking advantage of, of several different things, but any explicit glitches I'm not going to be taking advantage of, um, nor do I really know of any. <sighs> the um, Yeah, so this is going to be a ton faster than anyone else on YouTube, um, and if you can do it better than, than me, like, you know, let me know how you did it. Um, I'd be really interested in seeing, but there's, I don't think you can beat me on this. So we're going to do it on Legendary, of course. There's no mods. Um, and yeah, let's just get into it. and ice where no crops grow they have to be thus I have come to guide their raw talent why waste such savagery on each other while the southern lands are ripe for ravaging Hail, Throg, King of Trolls. You venture far from your natural lair. These lands are rich with meat and war. Feast upon them, grow in strength and number to bring ruin beyond. To the east, the icy mountains harbor the dwarfs of Kratadrak. They mine great treasures for themselves. But all of this can be yours for the taking. Or for the gods. To the south, kiss live. These men of the bear dare to rule your kingdom. Let them feel the power of the monstrous horde. Destroy Erengrad and reclaim your rightful throne in troll country. Beyond kiss live lies the empire. Its bickering states of power are ripe with treasures. Take from these soft southern lands and establish new ports on their shores from which you can raid further. Across the Sea of Claws, 
A would-be challenger lies in wait aboard his precious ship. Devour him, and do as you wish with his marauding warriors. Throg, you are the Winter Tooth, cunning and all-powerful. Let the realms of man suffer in horror and pain, as your monstrous horde lays waste to all. The harsh and desolate wastes of Norskar embrace you into it. All right, so we are all set up here. I'm not gonna be going over how Norskar works. Uh, you should already know. So, um, all right, we start here with Throg. We're at war with these guys. They have their army right here, and uh, I've practiced my opening moves. Um, don't want to go into a blitz blind, uh, but I haven't I haven't played beyond like turn 25 or so, so only the early game do I really know what I'm doing here. I have a, I have a strategy um, that I'm going to be going for, but it starts uh, by getting into this little set of trees right here, where we have where we can set up an ambush. And what we want to do is we want to ambush their army, and uh, the auto resolve gives a really nice uh, result. And uh, then we can confederate, steal their army. And the winter pyre, it's higher. Um, oh, leadership plus three in the entire army, but minus 15 speed per hand. I don't, I don't like that. I don't really need that much leadership. I'll get this honorable guy, I guess. None of these guys are really good. I'd rather have some like melee attack or something. Alright. Let's get some hunters and uh, then we're going to select our technology. We want to head towards Champions of War ASAP. The first, uh, the first couple turns here I'm just going to be cruising through auto resolving a lot because um, I know what I want to do. I've been pra I've practiced the first few turns quite a few times. There we go. We ambush these guys. Our ambush failed, however, auto resolve is still totally fine. Get a bit of loot, and look at that army. Ooh, that's really good. Uh, I'm s this is one of this is a really important piece of, of armor. We need as many of we need a, a lot of these because we're gonna be abusing the post battle loot system. All right, we'll get him a uh, route marcher, and then we want this guy to, oh yeah, we need to confederate with these. Whichever woeful deity protects you. Confederate, payment, there we go, and then uh, I also want to declare war on the Varg. My war. Which will hopefully uh, encourage them to send us an army soon. So this guy goes into raiding stance, and Trog goes into raiding stance too, right here. And then I don't need these these warhounds and ice wolves. I'm just gonna get rid of them. I don't like them. Don't 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 need them. Don't like them. Don't need these armor piercing dudes either. And uh, we're so we got two guys in raiding stance, and you can see that our public order is atrocious, but not quite good enough to rebel next turn. So what we're gonna do? Hire another lord. Here we go. And put him right into raiding stance as well. So now there'll be a rebellion that spawns near Aislinn's conclave next turn. And uh, here in Winter Pyro, we no longer need this. And we're good to go, so let's, uh, let's advance to the next turn. There we go, there's our rebellion. We'll uh, smash that up for some experience and money. And since Trog got the armor that increases uh, battle loot, we're gonna try and take advantage of that. 
and making sure that we attack with Trog. This guy also needs to get into reinforcement range. And then this guy gets into reinforcement range. And I think you can see what uh, what kind of shenanigans we're we're trying to pull off here. So we'll attack from this direction so the rebels go over here after they're defeated once. There we go. Okay, so... Yeah, this is fine. Unresolved, hardly any casualties. That's money. Yeah. Now with Throg, I want to uh, get Icy Wrath because that gives leadership to the trolls, which is important because they they do lack a significant amount of leadership. Give everyone Route Marcher first. And I'll smash these guys up again. Get a ton of experience for everybody. And you can see when we destroy their lord, we get a ton more loot. That's really important. We need to be careful about that. And we're pretty much always going to be sacrificing captives. Okay. So that is, uh, that's turn... The end of turn three here. Um... I'm going to get the Ruinous Altar so we can start getting some Shamans in these armies. Uh, that way they can also start gaining experience and stuff. And get really good. Let's see if their Sirtha X army over here is pretty pitiful looking. Um, And let's see, alright, I'm just going to pause recording a bit while I set up my armies and uh, get ready, and uh, I'll, I'll be back in a bit. Alright, we are all set to go to turn number three, Dominic. or turn four. I hired one additional lord here, we now have five stacks, uh, he is recruiting three of these guys on Force March, and then this guy um, is, is raiding. I've also renamed a couple of my armies yes. just to help me keep track of what their purpose is. So like main attack, he's going to be the guy that's actually initiating the attacks and uh, we want to stack as much post-battle loot bonuses on this guy. And um, this guy here, tank support one, he's going to be all about being the toughest, strongest fighter possible. Um, we're going to be investing as much as we can into his, his personal um, personal abilities and once we get you know, Plague of the Crow and uh, the Marauder Chariot he will be almost unstoppable um, and I'll show that eventually and we'll, we'll get there pretty quick like before turn 10 um, just you watch so anyway we're going to we're raiding here gonna respond another rebellion and then next turn we're also going to go and attack Sorrel Encampment so let's just do that. <clears throat> yeah, the rebellion showed up, popped up over here. It's a bit unfortunate. It'd be better if it was over here, but it's okay. Okay, so we want main attack one. To be attacking, but we need to set up everyone else into reinforcement range and I'm actually not going to include Trog in in the attack because I need him I want him to take out Sarl encampment and if I move him over here then he won't have enough movement points 
So yeah, you can see I changed the reverse helm armor to be on, on this guy. Let's go ahead and attack. Destroy these fools. There we go. Now, uh, we gotta level up on this guy. We want him to get Takers of All to get that 15% post battle loot. So then he'll be getting 25% post, post battle loot, um, which will be really, really helpful. Now, to main tank one, we want to start getting him towards Plague of the Crow as soon as possible. And then these guys, we also want to use them to milk experience. Um, let's see, I might need this guy to come and help uh, Trog, just see how the results are. Let's get this guy into reinforcement range. And also tank support one into reinforcement range. This way. That should be plenty of beef to uh, to take these guys out. There we go. Took hardly any damage. Gain some loot. Now. Sacking that just is very much. I'm gonna go ahead and occupy. That way we can start uh, trying to get rebellions here as soon as possible. Keep going towards icy wrath. And this guy, let's see. I'm not entirely sure what I want him to do yet, so I'm not gonna spend his his his, uh, his thing yet. But uh, main attack one, we want to go and finish off these rebels here. Let's go ahead and do that. Alright, I'm back. Just had to handle the phone call. Right. And... There we go. Look at us wrecking, raking up these... These, uh... These levels here. This guy, I want to get Route Marcher. I give everyone Route Marcher. I just want to keep everyone, um... Able to move as far as possible. This guy, I'm not going to spend his movement point just yet because I'm I'm still thinking about what role I want him to be. Um, now for Throg, we want to get him into raiding stance to start trying to milk uh, rebellions in the Sarl encampment, and uh, we really don't need this building, so I think I'm just going to get. Uh, I don't know. I might not get rid of it just yet. Let's see. Yeah, here in Acelink's Conclave, we want to get this growing. I want to get it up to level 3 so we can start building building some trolls. This guy's got to get back to Acelink's Conclave. And this guy needs to be in raiding stance. So we'll also trade units to um, yeah, trade those units. Get this guy over here. So I want to get uh, the frost worm into into Trog's army, just because. Uh, Want it to be in the most powerful army. We want it to be where we're where we uh, need it the most. Okay, so we'll get a rebellion here next turn, no problem. And we won't be able to get a actually. Battle time is feeding time. We might just barely be able to get a rebellion. It's a rating. Give us. Uh, Ooh, clumsy. Weapon strength 10%. That's that's nice. I like that. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and get this guy. 
Let's see, can we get can we get a rebellion going here? Not quite. Negative 89. So instead we'll uh, have him recruit some units. I know these aren't like really exciting names, but it's really important for keeping track of your armies when you're trying to exploit the um, the system kind of like this. So yeah, that's that's good for now. Let's go ahead and advance to to our next turn. Won't get a rebellion here, but we will get one here. That's good enough. All right. Okay, now we need to try and milk these rebellions for as much as we possibly can. So I want to bring our support tank unit and our support growth unit. First I want to grab, grab these things. And then bring this guy in into Reinforcing distance. Out. Not a chance. You can just get right over there. Perfect. And then, uh, and then we can go ahead and attack. Just keep auto resolving because you know there's the battles would be pretty easy and they just take a while. Here we go. Like stone physical resistance. That's good. Try to get as many of these guys into support here as possible. But you can really only fit two guys in that little crevice there. Oh, before I attack again, get this, because that'll give us 5% more loot than we otherwise would get. Attack him. Push him off. And then you'll see here we get a bunch of loot. This is where our money really comes from, here and here, with the sacrifice captives. Here we go, we got a shrieking blade, that's awesome. What? Now this guy, I want him to get into uh, Trog's army. And there we go. We have um, we are spawning. We got our armies in position to start milking two rebellions a turn now, which will help us um, get as much as like uh, some of these guys will be able to get like four battles in in a turn, just because they have. Um, there we go. Want to get. Norse resilience to get extra replenishment right for our troops every turn. And support tank, keep investing into noxious vessel. And support growth into swelling of doom. Slaughter the sheep. Sent by the serpent. The hound compelled me. Okay. So do you have the danger here of um of this guy getting attacked. However, it should be fine. Just need to set this guy into raiding stance so that we get a rebellion here next turn. Okay, this guy is. Let's see, let's check out his thing. Misshapen, so he'll be fine. For uh, being our second main attack army. There we go. And oh, I'm 
and to have the Lux Stone. I'd rather have Trog with the Lux Stone. So, let's get him. Lux Stone. Get that extra. So, this guy already causes fear, so I don't need him to have the Shrieking Blade. However, I would like our, our tank support. Uh, actually, the 8% weapon strength is pretty good. Um, yeah, we'll just keep it at that. Yeah. I'll, I'll manage all that shit later. Um, right now, it doesn't really need to be done. I don't need this building anymore, so I'm going to get rid of it. And uh, we just got the Ruinous Altar, so we can... Um, we can get a sorcerer. Let's check out who looks good. It yeah, looks all right. Here we go. This is great. This guy has a uh, maimed arm, so everyone in the army gets plus three melee defense. This guy's misshapen. That's pretty good too. Oh wow! Enemy leadership minus three for local region. That's awesome. However, I don't think I can pass up the maimed arm. Yeah, let's go for this guy. Get this uh, death dude with maimed arm, plus three melee defense for all our dudes. Okay, so now we're not just going to be gathering experience for our lords, but also for our um, hero units. Hold on, can I recruit another one this turn? Oh, hell yeah, let's... Is, am I allowed to do this? Nice, I can get two. I thought I could only get one per turn. Alright, so we got two two shamans. Um, one gives our army plus three melee defense. The other one uh, gives enemy army minus three morale. That's a big difference. <coughs> um, okay, so we're going to do a rebellion here and here. That should be pretty good. And now that I spawned both these guys, I I don't need this stupid altar anymore. I can just destroy it. All right, great. Let's advance to turn six. All right, now we are in position to make some serious trouble for our enemies here. Okay. So, got a rebellion here and here. You're gonna attack from this direction so that these guys can get a truly absurd amount of experience this turn. This guy is, uh, who is he? He's the fire sorcerer. He's the guy that gives. Um, negative leadership. I'll bed him with the tank support unit. And this guy. Him over here. Normal stance. This guy will bed him to give his army, uh, all his guys, extra melee defense. And then, um, let's see, I can't get any of these guys further over here, so we'll just attack. Now we got a total of one, two, three, four, five lords or heroes that are all gaining experience from this, arc, this battle here. There we go, made a ton of loot. These guys into position again. Finish this guy off. Get a bunch more experience. Oh, nice! We got a potion of toughness. That's really good because um, it we can we can trade that between different 
different generals as their health gets low in order to buff them up and heal them. Oh, I like that. Campaign movement range. Excellent. You can see we get a lot of items and followers doing this as well. Now these guys just waltz into reinforcement range of these rebels. There we go. See, these guys are climbing their ranks really fast. Like, their rank is approximately equal to our turn number. It's really insane. Okay. Now, all the shit down here is just not super useful right now. Instead, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some of the stuff up here. Um, there we go. I'll make him. I think it'll make him more powerful in all result. Not entirely sure. Yeah, we'll just keep getting this shit in main attack one. Um, we got everything down here that we want immediately. We'll get some of this stuff later too, but uh, actually, yeah, I don't need. I don't need this stuff. I, I want one army that can. That gets plus experience for all recruitments and um, it has lightning strike. That's also really useful. Okay. So we'll just get main attack one into reinforcement range of this battle. And then uh, who's main attack two? He's this guy. This guy has Clumsy, so we want to make him into one of the tank lords. Because he gets a bunch of extra weapon strength. Which means I really want to start buffing him up as soon as possible too, so let's just get main attack. Well, I want this guy to get levels up to. We'll just attack with main with tank support. Yeah. Actually, we'll just get rid. We'll just back off the growth support guy. And then I need to attack with tanks. Main attack too. All right. This should be fine. There we go, captives captured after battle, that's good. Let's get the sky takers of all. Let's get tank support too. Back over here. There we go. Earned an absolutely absurd amount of experience this turn. Ooh, this is nice. Let's see. Flaming Axe of Cormac. Uh, target self, extra weapon damage, and melee attack. And it's a constant thing. It's only disabled if leadership is low. That's amazing. It's really good. Um, yeah, okay. Armor piercing damage. Alright, whatever. Nice. So we have a bunch of. Uh, I'm just gonna go through all the items and followers and shit for all my generals, but I'm not gonna record that. It's super boring. Alright, we're back and uh, ready to advance the next turn. Yes. I have one more general recruiting two spearmen and javelin men. That way, each, uh, each main attack armor will be able to have two spearmen to guard left and right flank uh, for manually resolved battles. And then um, these Marauders, we're probably going to start phasing them out, but phasing them to a different army. And uh, yeah, we're going to get two more rebellions. Uh, we spent just about all the money that we can without going bankrupt. So let's advance to turn seven.
We have two rebellions. That takes one here. We got our with our fire sorcerer. And uh, we got main attack one ready to attack them. And then um, growth support and uh, our new general here. Let's just get them all in range before attacking these guys. And I'm going to manually resolve this just to kind of test out both the death uh, mage and the, um, and the fire sorcerer too. Let's go ahead and attack. We could auto resolve, but I want to uh, test out with our wizards to because I, I we need to get an idea of about how many units we really need in order to deal with these rebellions, so that we can cut out the ones that we don't. Uh, that'll be much more efficient overall. Let's go ahead and jump into this battle. So these guys didn't take any casualties. These guys took some damage, but a lot of that will be healed. No problem in the end turn. I go Opal Amulet. Some defense resistance. That's alright. Tormentor Sword. Nice. Uh, uh, that's that's pretty good. I like that. Oh yeah, we got another Reaver's Helm. That's awesome. I'm gonna give that to Main Attack 2 right away before we forget. There we go. Now we now both our Main Attack armies have the Reaver's Helm, which will give them a lot more, give us a lot more post battle loot. All right, we are gaining levels with these guys. Hmm. Unfortunately, this guy's like too far away to get experience from both rebellions, right? Or this turn. That's alright. Let's do what we can. I'm not gonna send this guy to attack. He needs to move um, towards our other front. So I'll resolve that. Alright, this is a pretty good trait. So this guy got plus one public order for all provinces from being kind. So we'll do that. Let's see, this guy needs. Okay, we can give armor piercing damage to our spear unit, I guess. Yeah, so we'll uh, auto-resolve this. Alright, collect some serious dough since we smashed the general. There we go, finish him off. Alright. Yeah, so we are, uh, we're just about all ready to advance to turn 8. I'll just pause recording while I figure out exactly what I want to do. Actually, uh, this is going to be the end of this episode, so thanks for joining me. Part 2 is next.